Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, we've got a great one for you today. We're going to show you how to design your own buttons from any piece of text, and you can add them to any text-based module you want. For instance, we've got a blur module up here. We've added a little button to it. And of course, you can color it and style it however you want. There's a little person module. Added a little button to the bottom of that too. And just on a regular text module, we've added a button to that as well. Like I say, these aren't Divi buttons. These are just custom buttons. that will allow you to turn any little piece of text into a call to action button. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Okay, once enabled, let's go down. Let's start a new little row here, a little green button to add a new row. I'm going to put three columns in mine. And let's just start off with a simple text module. Diddy comes with all these modules as standard. Those blue ones right there, you get if you have the plugin Divi Supreme Pro, which is one of my favorites. If I've got to use a plugin for Divi, that's what I'll use. But we're not using that today. I'm going to use a regular text module. And there it is right there. Now, to save confusion, let's pop it up the top and get these other buttons out of the way. I'm just going to grab this whole row, green tab for the row, drag it by its handle, left click, release it where I want it, which is up the top here. Okay, well, let's go into our little text module now. And actually, before I do that, you may have noticed this text module, the actual module was hidden underneath it a little bit, the dark tab for the module. Didn't have any problems getting to it, but if ever you do in a situation like this and you can't get to what you want to get to because it's under something else, hit your little purple button at the bottom here. Left-hand side, little icon called Wireframe View. It'll take you to the back end and you can get to every module really easily that way. Just thought I'd mention that. For anybody that has overlap issues okay well let's go back in here and do what we've got to do well let's create the link that we want to turn into a button so i'm going to just drop down one and we'll just say click here or whatever it is you need to say with yours obviously you're going to want to turn it into a link by selecting it going up here to the link insert link put the url where you want to take your people in there I'm just putting a hashtag for a placeholder. I've got no real URL. I don't want to change the title. I want it to say click here. Target, always best practice. If you're linking to your own site, leave it on none. If you're linking to somebody else's site or away from your site, open it in a new window. That way your site's going to stay open. Great. Once you're happy, click OK. Oh, we got a little link there. It's the default color of whatever the links are on this site, which is that kind of purpley color, obviously. But we're going to change that. So it really doesn't look much like a button. So let's change it into a button. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select it again. I'm going to turn it in perhaps heading three, heading four. You can turn it into what you want. Or you can leave it as paragraph text if you want to. The reason I'm doing that is if we now go over to the text slider here, it gives it H4 tags when you turn it into an H4. And that's what I'm using. You can write your own, just have paragraph text if you want to, but I'm happy with that H4. There's the link, the href that we gave it. And that's encapsulating our little bit of text right there. And then, of course, we are closing H4. In the opening H4, which is the size we made it there, I'm going to put a gap after the 4 and before the closing pointy bracket there. I'm going to write the word class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, equals, and I'm going to open and Close two lots of inverted commas there. So that's two inverted commas. Inside, I'm going to make up a class name. Let's call it my BTN, my short code for my button. Great. So we've actually given that a name now. It's got its name called my button that we can target it with some code. So let's just save this now. What I'm going to do is add a new code module on this page, and then I'll transfer it over to the custom CSS block so you can use it on any page. I'm just adding a code module so I can do it all on this page to show you, and then we'll transfer it when we're all done. So I'm putting a single column in this little row. I'm going to add a little code module. 
I want to write some CSS, so I have to open some style tags here, which is left pointy bracket, S-T-Y-L-E, and we're going to transfer this, so you won't need this when we put it in the customizer. You do not need style tags in the custom CSS tab because it knows it's CSS. So we gave it a class name of my button. So all class names have a dot or a period. Dot my btn was the class name that we gave it. Let's open and close some curly brackets here. And we can decide how we want to make these buttons. First thing I want to do is give it a background color. So I'm going to say background colon and whatever color you want. I'm just going to say blue. You can use hex colors, RGBAs or whatever you want. Put a little semicolon so we can add another line. Okay, I can't really read that writing. I want that writing to be perhaps white on top. So we can just say color. FFF, or I could have just written white. That's better. We can see it a bit better. Let's make it look a little bit more like a button. Let's try giving it padding. Maybe 15 pixels, 15 PX. That's a bit more like it. I want that writing to be in the middle of our button. So I've got a semicolon. If you don't put the semicolon on the end, it will not read the next line of code within the curly brackets here. So make sure you do that. It's a great habit to get into. Let's put that text in the middle. So I'm going to say text dash line center. And you may be thinking, well, I don't want to go through this for every single button. We don't need to. Once it's done once, all you need is that class name. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. That's great. Now, if you want your buttons to be the whole width of the module, you can leave it just like that. I happen to want mine to be, I don't know, about half that. So let's give it a width. You can actually give it a, a pixel value if you want them all to be exactly the same. I'm going to give it a percentage. So it's a percentage of the size of the module that it's under. Let's say, I think 45% I used last time. Obviously, make it your own. That's great. If you want to align it on the left, just leave it like it is. If you want to align it on the right, you can say float right. I don't. I want mine in the middle. So all I'm going to say is margin dash auto. That's great. A little bit close to our writing there. So let's give it a bit of margin on the top of, say, 1M. You could use a percentage or a pixel value. 1M is going to be about the same as the line height of that text up there, that paragraph text. So I'll say margin dash top. And let's say 1M. Like I say, you can use pixels, percentage, whatever you want. That's going to work for me. Great. Well, that's kind of looking like I want it. If you wanted to put a border around it, you could do that with border. Say so two picks, solid. Yeah, let's just say black. I'm not going to have a border on mine, but if you wanted to put a border on there, you could do. I'm hoping you can see that. Let's change that black to red so it stands out a bit better. As you can see, that's got a two pixel red border around there. I don't really want that on mine, so I'm going to take it away. But if you like borders on your buttons, that's fine. I do want slightly rounded corners. The Divi button's got about five or six pixels rounded corners. To make them round, you just right border, dash radius, colon. And if you want small rounded corners, say five pixels, they're slightly rounded there. If you want really rounded corners, perhaps pill shaped buttons, and turn that five pixels into a 50 pixels and watch what happens. You've got pill shaped buttons there. Fantastic. Don't want quite as much as that. Let's take it back to five. That'll work for me. But to make it just more interesting as a button, I want it to actually do something when they hover over it, like change color or something like that. So let's select our class name up here, dot my BTN. I'm going to drop down just under this curly bracket here. Paste it in there. Right after the end of my BTN with no gap, I'm going to put a colon and then no gap again in the word hover. And we can create a hover state. We can have something different happening. So let's just put two little curly brackets in there. And uh, we want background. We're going to change the background color. Let's just change it from blue. I'm going to make mine red. But obviously, you're going to want to go with whatever your brand colors are. 
And like I say, you can use hex colors, RGBAs, whatever you want. Now when I hover over, see it instantly turns red. I'd like to kind of slow that down a bit so it sort of fades in a bit more gracefully. So to do that in our regular styles, not the actual hover styles, make sure we put a little semicolon on the end, drop down one more. I'm going to do transition, dash duration. Uh, let's give it 0.75 seconds or something like that, which is three quarters of a second. So 0.75 S. And you don't need to because this is the last kind of line of code, but I'm going to chuck a semicolon on the end of there just for habit. Now when we hover over, it does it more gracefully. There's actually a bit of a transition of color in between the red and the blue. If I make that 1.75, you'll see the transition of colors a bit more. Sort of going red, then purple, then blue, blue, then a sort of purple, then red. A little bit too much for me. I'm going to take it back to how it was. Just wanted to demo that color change for you. Great. And we've got our button. Now, once you're happy with one of those, we can apply it to just about anything you want. Now, I've only used a code module for this today, so I could demo it on the page. I'm going to select everything inside this code module, apart from the style, opening and closing style brackets there. So I'm going to select all of that. I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to go down to my dashboard now. We can go down, you could do this in the customizer if you want to, but I'm going to go down to Divi, the theme options right here. On the general tab, if we roll all the way down, we've got a custom CSS box over here. You can either go down and place this on the end of whatever your last bit is there, or you can just scoot the top bit down a little bit. And we can paste our code in there. I like to give it a bit of a title so we know what's going on. It's also a courtesy if anybody edits the site after you. Title is forward slash star star forward slash. Anything that you write within the stars will not be read as code. So it's a great place for title and notes and things. So let's just say custom button. Great. Now we can drop down just below that and paste that code that we copied in there. Control V to paste. There it is. We'll save our changes. Make sure you hit the save changes button until you get a green check mark. There's a green check mark. Great. Now we can actually go back to this page. I can delete this whole code module because it's now going to be pulling the code from the theme options. Initially, when I delete this, it'll go back to how it was. But when I exit the page, it should pull in that code. So let's just close this. I'm going to hit the check mark. I'm going to delete the whole row that it's in. That button's going to go back to normal. Let's save draft or publish if you're ready. If you haven't done so already, just hit the little purple button here. We can save draft or publish if you're ready. We'll exit the visual build. Now it's pulling that code from our custom CSS block. You can see we've got our regular button there. And to use it on any module, let's just add a couple of more modules. And I'm sure a few of you ahead of me already, really easy to do. I'm going to re-enable the visual builder there. And any text-based module, this is going to work on. Let's perhaps add a blurb like we've got down below there. A little blurb module. Anything that's got a text field like this in it. Chuck a little image in there. Now let's make our little button. That's always going to be in the text up here. Let's move it to the right. Drop down. Whatever it is you want your button to say. Again, I'm going to make mine a heading four. Like I say, you make yours whatever you want. We've got to give it a link so it's got somewhere to go. Again, I'll just put a hashtag in there. Now to turn it into our button, we'll go to text. After the H4, you know what to do. Add a little gap. The word class equals. Open and close two little inverted commas. Inside the inverted commas, we just need to give it the class name, YBTN. As you can see, let's turn that into the button. Let's just pop everything else in the middle because this is center aligned. Bingo. Don't need to do a call to action. It's got its own button. What else did we do down here? Oh, we just use it on a person module. Like I say, anything with text, this is going to work on. 
You can go even into your posts and things like that. Just scoot a little bit of text down, make it a link, give it this class name. It'll be a button. Uh, where's our little person module? There we are right there. Text, here's the text. Again, whatever you want your button to say. We'll make it a four again. We'll add a link. Now we need to go over to our text tab. H4, give it a get, class equals, then we'll close, inverted commas there. You know what to do next, my BTN. If I move this out of the way, we should have a button on there. I guess we better give this poor person identity. Let's give it image, give it this fella. And again, I'm going to shoot everything into the middle. And another thing that you may want to do, actually, let's go down to our text here. Let's pop everything in the middle. Another thing that you can do if you want to, as you can see, we've got our buttons here. They're working fine. If you wanted to create different ones, just say this. One that was left aligned, one that was right aligned, and one in the center right here. You could do that quite easily by just duplicating this code. If I go back here, and I select all this button code, you could have a different bit. If I control C, I'll drop down just before, just after the button code there. I'm gonna paste it back in there. I'm gonna call it my button L for a left one. So you just take the margin auto, that'll be a line left. And we can go down once more and if you wanted one on the right, instead of margin auto, we can float right. Make sure that we change those class names. So that's going to be my button R. Make sure we do it on the hover state as well. And I need to do it on the hover state of this, but this was my button L. Now you've got one for each instance there. Before I actually do it, I'm going to make sure everything's saved. I'm going to refresh this page. That way, it's going to be pulling in the most current CSS that we've just written. We've still got our builder active. I'm sure some of you are ahead of me on this one. Go into a module. We want this one on the right. So I need to change the class name. To do that, we need to go to the text tab. There's the class name, my button L. We've got a left align button. We'll leave that one in the middle and let's pop this one on the right. Go in there, down to our text. Make sure we're on the text tab so we can see the class name. And this is my button R. As you can see, that button's now on the right. Let's just save that. Make everything sure everything's going to work on the front end. And there we have it. Here's the one that's on the left aligned. Here's the one that's center aligned. Here's one that's right aligned. Really easy to do. And as usual, I'll put this code down below. I'll just put this top code on there if you want to change it left or right. I've shown you how to do that. But I'll put this code down there. I would suggest you write it out for yourself because CSS is such a wonderful thing to learn. It really will take your editing skills to the next level. And it's not difficult. It's really not. But as I say, I'll put this down below. You can copy it, paste it, use it how you will. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Or we'll make a little demo video like this one. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.